Hi, we have started the vitamin class, so I'm going to share with you one of the strategies that we have been using to divide. And this is called the place value disk model. This is a very visual model, um, which helps students see what's going on when we divide. So if I have a problem such as 48 divided by 3, Oops, sorry, 48 divided by 3. What I'm going to do is set this up in a place value chart. Here are my tens, and here are my ones. And I'm going to take my dividend, which is 48, that's the number that I'm dividing, and I'm going to represent that with disks, which are really just closed dots. When your students are drawing this, make sure that they're drawing the disks large enough to see. So in 48, I have four tens, and I have eight ones. That way. And I'm, that's my total, so I'm going to draw this little squiggly line so I can differentiate when I start to divide. And then I'm dividing 48 into 3, so I'm going to draw three spaces down here. And sometimes it helps to number the groups or the spaces so students can keep track of uh, how much they're dividing by. So here I have 48 divided by 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just start to draw these dots into the groups that they would go into. So for 48, I have one 10. I can put it here. I have another 10. I can put it here. My third 10 I'll put down here. Now I am left with one 10 right here. I cannot divide that equally among these three groups. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to regroup. I'm going to take one ten and exchange it for ten ones. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I should have eighteen ones because I had the eight that I started with first and now the ten that I added. So now I have eighteen ones to divide between these three groups. And I'm just going to start physically doing that. I'm going to draw dots equally until I get to 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And it's always good just to double check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've used them all. So now, to find my answer, my quotient, I'm going to look at how many disks are in each group. When I look at that group, I'm only looking at a group that goes across. So I have one 10, I have to remember that this dot equals 10, plus eight ones. So 10 plus eight, sorry, not eight, six. 10 plus six, is 16. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If I did this right, if I divided equally, I should have the same amount in each group. So 10 and 16, 10, 16. So my quotient, my answer to this problem, 48 divided by 3 equals 16. So that's kind of the end of part one. And this is a problem that did not have a remainder, um, so it's very easy to see what happened. I will demonstrate one more problem that does have a remainder, so you can see what that looks like. So let's do the problem 91 divided by 4. Again, I'm going to set up a place value chart. Here's my tens, here's my ones. And I take 91, I take my dividend, and I model that using disks. So I have nine tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I have one one. 
And I'm going to draw my little squiggly line. I'm going to give myself some space to show that this is my dividend. I'm going to take 91 and I'm going to divide it into four groups. So here I am. I'm going to draw these four rows. I have to extend my line. And to make sure that I am dividing it into four groups, I can number it here. I circle these numbers just so I know it's a label and it's not something that I'm actually using for my answer. Now I can start dividing. I always start dividing with my largest place value. So I'm going to take nine tens and divide those into the four groups. Here's one, two, three, four. And I can cross those out as I go to make sure that I still have some to divide. I can keep going. So here's five, six, seven, eight. And now I have one ten left. I cannot take that one ten and divide it equally among the four groups. So that one is my remaining ten. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ten and trade it in for ten ones. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I have 11 ones that I can divide between those four groups. And here I go again, I'm dividing these ones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. And now here I have to be careful. I can see I only have three left. And that's not going to be enough to divide equally into my four groups. So these three now, become my remainder. So to find my final answer, once again, I'm going to look across how many disks I have put into each group. Here I have 10, 20, 21, 22. And if I look down, I can check in that I have the same number in each group, but all of my groups are equal. So I have 22 and then I have these three left over, and this is my remainder three. So when I come back to write my final answer, it's 22 remainder three. Now one other thing I've been trying to teach the students is how to check their work to make sure that they did their math accurately. And we can do that fairly simply with division because division is the opposite of multiplication. So to check my work, I take my quotient, my whole number quotient, which in this case is going to be 22. So I'll do this down here. And I'm going to multiply that by my divisor. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. So that's 88. Now what I have to do, that does not match, but I have this remainder here, and I have to add that in. So now I'm going to take 88 plus 3. 8 plus 3 is 11. And I get 91. And since this number matches my dividend, what I started with, I know that I did my math accurately. So this is the place value disk model for division. Um, you've seen one problem that did not have a remainder. You saw one problem that did have a remainder, and both you saw that when we have tens that we have left over, we're going to regroup into my ones. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I hope that this helps you, um, and thanks for helping your child. I really appreciate it.